Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, like I told you guys in my first video, I'm going to be doing some high yield topics for every shelf exam, what you need to know, what's gonna help you on your shelf exam, some questions that you might see on your shelf exam. So my first rotation was family medicine. A lot of students are like kind of like psyched out and scared from that exam and some students say it's one of the hardest exams because there's not like it's a very vague exam and they could like just throw it at you any question and there's like a lot of resources that you don't know where to study and what's the best resource to study. Some students tell you use online methods, some students tell you case files, U worlds enough. There's a lot of just resources out there. So the purpose of this video is basically to let you know from my experience, what I've seen clinically and on the shelf exam, that's gonna help you answer most of the questions correct on the exam. Basically, the most important thing you're always going to hear in family medicine rotation is the U, let's do this, USPSTF. Did I do it right? USPSTF. So USPSTF guidelines, are the guidelines that we recommend screening to our patients. These guidelines are asked so much on the shelf exam and also you're going to find in multiple settings during your clinical rotations, your preceptor, your doctor, your resident that's working with you are probably gonna pimp you. So pimp you is basically a word where like the attending starts like throwing at you questions and you just have to answer. Basically, these guidelines you should know, memorize, please. I put them all together in one video. These are the high yield that most likely you're going to see on your shelf exam. Let's get to it. The first recommended screening USB SEF guideline is blood pressure. Basically, blood pressure screening, we start uh, we start screening for blood pressure adults ages 18 to 39 without risk factors every three to five years and adults 40 plus with risk uh, factors every single year. And the real question that they love asking on shelf exam is like, how do we actually diagnose someone with high blood pressure? If a patient comes into your clinic or to the hospital and you take their blood pressure and it's high, do we right away immediately diagnose them with blood pressure? The answer is no. So the way it is, is like there's something called white coat syndrome where most patients you're going to see clinically and at the hospital, just the setting alone and when they see doctors and like nurses and like that whole hospital setting kind of hires their blood pressure. So that is not enough to diagnose somebody with high blood pressure. To diagnose somebody with high blood pressure, you need an average of two or more readings to take on separate occasions. So you have to have two or more readings of a high blood pressure in different occasions and settings to diagnose somebody with high blood pressure. So if I wanna give you guys an example, let's see a patient comes in with a, high, uh, with a high blood pressure of 159 over 98. What's the next step? There's going to be multiple options. Start with treatment, what do you do? You're gonna have multiple options, A, B, C, D. So the correct answer is basically ambulatory monitoring outside of the office they should keep a log at home and track their blood pressure, how it is at home in different times, different settings. And then they come back to your office, let you know those numbers. And based on that, you'll start with the treatment. Usually most patients you're going to start with ACE inhibitors, ARBs. Those are the first line treatment. And anytime any patient has any kidney problems, always give ACE and ARB. Other treatments sometimes are preferred if a black patient comes in, uh, you start them with thiazides and calcium channel blockers. Those are on the exam kind of questions, but clinically, to be honest, I've seen a lot of like uh, black patients and we start them with like uh, with ACE inhibitors and ERBs. But I guess like in the books, basically, they always tell you like try to like avoid the ACE and ARBs and start them with thiazides and calcium channel blockers. ACE and ARBs are always going to be first line treatment. Please know the mechanism of actions of these drugs, uh, especially like thiazide, they love asking about it during the shelf exam. Uh, so thiazide actually causes hyperkalasemia. So it increases your calcium level. That's good with like patients that have osteoporosis. It's like a really good drug to start with. It also causes hyperuricemia. So do not give anyone with a gout a thiazide. So just know these kind of adverse events and the mechanism of actions because they also ask about that. Another question I could remember seeing it and question banks I've done is basically if a, if a patient with high blood pressure and has a history of migraines, you use a beta blocker. And also patients with any cardiovascular disease, beta blockers for high blood pressure. Those are like the, the different times when we prescribe different medications other than ACE and ARBs. That's it with blood pressure. Going to the next screen, which is lipid panel. 
We start screening for hyperlipidemia, men ages 35 and older, and women age 45 and older if they're at increased risk. Diabetes uh, screening, we screen everybody 35, ages 35 to 70 if they're overweight or obese. Lung cancer screening. So lung cancer screening starts ages 50 to 80 years old with a 20 year history of smoking or quit within the last 15 years. What do we do? We do a low dose CT. So another question, a patient comes in, 66 years old, so they're in, that time, they're in that age frame, has a history of smoking, but quit smoking within 25 years. You don't need to screen for that. So again, know the exact criteria when to do the screening. So 20 year history of smoking or quit within the last 15 years. We do a low dose CT for lung cancer screening. Colon cancer screening, a colonoscopy, Basically, that's recommended. We start colon cancer screening ages 45 and older, and we do it every 10 years. Except patients that like have a history, a family history of somebody having colon cancer. So an example, let's say a patient comes in and their father has a history of colon cancer at age 42. When do we start screening the patient? 32, so you go 10 years before their family history time of colon cancer. Besides that, 40 years old, 45 year old, healthy, no family history, you start screening for colon cancer every 10 years. HIV scre uh, screening, we screen that to all patients ages 15 to 65. Syphilis screening, we screen for that for with to anybody at increased risk of STDs. That's pretty much of screening for like the like overall screening for any patient that comes in. Now, if you wanna make it like more focused, like for men screening, for men screening, we do an abdominal aortic aneurysm screening, which is basically an ultrasound to your abdominal aorta. And we screen for that in men ages 65 to 75, whoever smoked. So if a patient comes in with a history of smoking between the ages of 65 to 75, you screen for abdominal aortic aneurysm, you do an ultrasound, and it's a one-time screening. Woman screening, chlamydia and gonorrhea screening are uh, recommended for a sexually active women, 25 years or younger, and 25 years or older at increased risk for infection. So they love asking about that anytime you see a woman that's at increased risk for infection or sexually active, always if you have an option, chlamydia, gonorrhea, it's like most of the time, that's going to be your answer. Cervical cancer. Cervical cancer starts uh, at ages 21 to 65. Do not ever, ever, ever screen for cervical cancer to any woman patient less than 21. Don't do cervical cancer ages 21. Do not do that because they always love throwing that question. They will tell you a patient came in, 18 years old, sexually active, a uh, history of STDs. They make it appealing to like choose cervical cancer screening. Do not choose cervical cancer because less than 21, do not. So with cervical cancer screening, how it's like cut down is like basically ages 21 to 29, we do cytology only every three years. Cytology is basically a pap smear. And ages uh, 30 to 65, we could do cytology only every three years or HRHPV every five years alone, or we could do a combined HPV and cytology every five years. Breast cancer is basically, uh, we, we screen for breast cancer ages 50 to 74, women age 50 to 74, and it's every two years. That's when we do a mammogram. Another question they could give you with like breast cancer is basically a patient came to your office, she on palpation, she basically found like a, a lump on her breast. What do you do next? So that's where the, the trick comes in. If she is, under 30 years old, you do an ultrasound, under ultrasound, so you, you, and if she's more than 30 years old, you do a mammogram, M, M, so more mammogram under ultrasound, and the cutoff age is 30 years old. With pregnant woman screening, if a patient comes in, she's pregnant, we do not know her HIV status, we do an HIV screening. Gestational diabetes, we screen for that 
at week 24. Hepatitis B, we screen for hepatitis B uh, at the first prenatal visit. If you get a patient that's basically has bacteria, she's pregnant, she has bacteria, but she's asymptomatic, we still treat that even though she's asymptomatic. Pregnant, asymptomatic bacteria, treat. And Tdap vaccine, they always love asking what vaccine is recommended for pregnant patients. And if you see an option that's Tdap, always choose Tdap. It's recommended to, for every pregnancy. Osteoporosis screening, we start screening for that you know, for women ages 65 and older. We do a DEXA scan, that's for osteoporosis. Children screening, we do a, uh, an ophthalmology and an auditory screening uh, ages three to five years old. Depression screening, I do not know why they always love asking this question. So you get a patient, a patient comes in, they're in their 13 years old and uh, they ask you what's the recommended screening at this time you do a major depressive you screen for major depressive disorders so we do depression screening ages 12 between ages 12 to 18 years old obesity screening we start with like obesity screening in children and adolescents six years and older that's pretty much the high yield screening that you would see clinically and you would see during your shelf exams, most likely you're going to see questions from these USPSTF recommendations. So please know them by heart, review them. If you need to watch this video multiple times, watch it. If you have any questions about the USPSTF guidelines, please reach out to me. And sometimes just keep an eye, they could change them from year to year, the guidelines. So double check like this is like, this is the most recent up to date guidelines. If you have any questions, any concerns, please reach out. This is gonna, this is definitely stuff that you need to know for your family medicine shelf exam. Take care, good luck, keep killing it.